Hi everybody. Well, it's almost Valentine's Day and nothing says romance more than I'm not going to unintentionally impregnate you or give you a sexually transmitted illness. So I'm here at the Museum of Sex in New York City at an exhibit called Rubbers, The Life, History and Struggle of the Condom. Condoms have been around basically since the beginning of time. Been, they've been made out of everything from linen sheets, animal intestines, fish bladders, um, rubber, latex, all your thing. So it's really this, this one object that um, has been a, a center of creativity. And the first actual rubber condom was made when? Charles Goodyear made the whole process of vulcanizing rubber, which is the mid-1800s. Then we were able to have rubber condoms in all of their stages and forms. And what was the advantage of the rubber condom over the previous version? I mean, it was so much uh, less porous kind of an object. It was a much better form of barrier protection. Condoms have been shown to decrease sexually transmitted Absolutely. infections, HIV, Absolutely. and of course to prevent pregnancy. I think the condom has always been this, this subject of controversy because of its relationship to contraception, but at various points in our history we've realized that it's a necessity to keep people safe, um, and even the U.S. government has had, you know, at various times to promote condom usage because of the necessity to keep our population healthy. For some people, they're only aware of the male condom, but there's also another option, um, the female condom, that's had a couple of different versions that have come out, and it's available to women if maybe their partner doesn't want to use a condom, um, so it's used as this tool of empowerment. All around the world, there's such violence against women, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to sex, mm -hmm. and women very often aren't in control of their own destiny there, mm -hmm. and at least there is some ability to protect themselves. Then this provides a means for that. Yeah, that's so important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I personally think that there has to be a lot more research into the female condom because we're never going to be able to rely on men to completely protect themselves really and women have to have some ability to control that. Yeah and wonderful you know international agencies are putting money into getting these to women and making it a much more valuable option. Sarah what is this? Well right here we have a beautiful dress made out of over 1,200 hand-dyed, hand-sewn condoms, and it's a replica of a Valentino bubble dress from the 1960s. What's great about this is the artist, a Brazilian artist named Adriana Bertini, um, she's made these beautiful couture condom dresses. They've been featured at the UN, they've featured at many exhibitions, um, but she also goes around the world and she has these um, these events where she teaches people how to make these condom dresses because a lot of studies have shown that if you touch a condom and you're used to having a condom, it takes away the taboo, it takes away the embarrassment, and it makes it something that you're more likely to use within the sexual act. This artist right here, Randy Palumbo, has made these really fun and whimsical pieces out of condoms themselves. I guess it gets it out there and desensitizes people Absolutely. to the taboo of it, right? Mm -hmm. So that people are more comfortable with yeah, and talking about the condom, it, using it. And right. just making it playful and fun and glowing. Is it still taboo today? You know, I think for some people it is. Um, but we're hoping that more and more our exhibitions, particularly this exhibition, will contribute to a larger discourse about safer sex. We're hoping that if you're mature enough to have sex, that you're mature enough to use a condom and have that conversation with your partner.